lift our voices high to the Lord. Oh, let's exalt Him and praise Him. Bless the name of Jesus. Bless the name of Jesus. Praise the beautiful name of the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. What a remarkable gathering of apostolic men. And I echo the sentiments of Brother Paget. Sometimes we do feel alone. But if there's any testimony that would set aside all of those doubts, you look around you here tonight, and we are apostolic men gathered together with our families for the will of God. Praise God. What a treat it is to feel the Lord, to know Him. It's a very unique meeting this week as it unfolds. The will of God, we're going to hear a lot of preaching. I would imagine things that maybe we hold our sword from just a little bit at times because of the congregation of saints. I heard it said more than one time, ouch, I wish my saints hadn't been there for that. But here in this meeting, the Apostle Paul said these words that Seeing we have this hope, we use great plainness of speech. Here at this Apostolic Ministerial Conference, it's in order to preach our doctrine. Preach it right. Preach it without apology. Preach it without any shades of compromise. And the only one we're interested in impressing is our great God. There's only one message that will save us. Only one message that will save this world. Praise God. It's right in this message to preach about our holiness. We are a separated people unto God. It's right. It's right in this meeting. It's right in this meeting that we preach about the lost and about souls. It's right in this meeting that we preach about prayer, about consecration in the ministry. It's right in this meeting that we preach about those things that God would ordain so that when we leave this place we are challenged by the sweetness of God's holy word, by the greatness of his good work that is before us. Amen. I feel like a fellow traveler here in this journey called the Apostolic Ministry. I do not come tonight with the authority of all the answers. I do come with a lot of questions. I have come with a lot of needs. I have come with a lot of desires. But I know that God has come. Amen. And a lot of prayer and a lot of supplication. If all of the prayers that have been prayed for this meeting, for the various good brethren that will be preaching, could be stacked up, we'd be wading through prayers knee-deep from now to eternity. God's got it in mind to touch our hearts. And I really believe He's got it in mind to help us tonight. It's never convenient, and never comfortable. The first night in a new auditorium, getting the sound system all adjusted, the excitement and the weariness of travel upon us and minds scattered and questions that don't have answers yet. It's very difficult in the first night sometimes to catch our stride. But I have an assurance from the Holy Ghost. I feel a confidence from God. There's going to be some good things in His Spirit going to unfold around here beginning tonight. Say, brethren, we don't have a night to waste. We don't have a night to throw away. We want the grace of God to come tonight. Talk to us tonight. Lift up your hands. Let's ask the Lord. Talk to us tonight. Praise the name of Jesus. 
Praise the name of Jesus. Our faith is in you. Our faith is in your word. Our confidence, God, comes from your spirit. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Praise God. They told me that when they had selected this first night slot, that they were looking for a sacrificial lamb. Brother Howard, in his inimitable way, told me that, no, nah, really, they were looking for a sacrificial hog. And I was it. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And I suppose that it would be the right thing to say a lot of the foundational thoughts that went into this this gathering, the invitation, and your response. I will tell you that I have spent a lot of time asking God for the right direction and what I want in the Holy Ghost tonight to talk to us about is probably not what you anticipated. It may not even fit the mold of what you expect when you hear that I'm going to be preaching uh, somewhere. But this is what I feel like that the Lord would have us to say. If you have your Bibles tonight, turn with me to the book of Exodus, to the third chapter. We'll begin reading at verse number one. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burnt. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto uh, Moses. God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Draw not nigh hither, put off thy shoes from off thy feet. For the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. I want you to note, if you would, the last portion of verse 5. For the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. Very familiar setting the scripture. But I have a little different twist in my mind tonight. I want to talk to us about a safe place. Let's ask the Lord to anoint now the preaching of his word. Jesus, to our hearts, to our lives, to this great gathering of men and women who come from very churches, the problems, the difficulties, the passions, the interests. I'm praying tonight you would feed every one of them, God, with your holy word. Break it one more time. Let there be fragments left over in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. We give you all the praise. Praise God. God bless you. You may be seated. Amen. Scripture says, For the place where thou standest is holy ground. It's very easy to discern the definition of what the Lord was suggesting to Moses when he said this is holy ground. What he is saying to him at this place and at this moment, this is a dedicated and a consecrated place. And this is a place that is sanctified unto me. We could use this definition of that word, that it was a sanctuary at that moment, at that place. 
Moses has spent some time, as a matter of fact, approximately 40 years has been spent on the back side of this desert. He is not unfamiliar with its terrain. He is not unfamiliar with its possibilities. He is keeping sheep that do not belong to him. And he sees this phenomenon. And he turns. And the Lord says, it is holy ground. And from this launching place, there was a ministry that still, if I can use this term tonight, is somewhat of a type of the apostolic ministry. And the journey that Moses took as a shepherd of people begins at this sanctified and holy ground, a place of a sanctuary. I would imagine that he is not altogether comfortable being where he is. He would rather be in the front and the center of the battle for supremacy over the tyranny of the Egyptians. He proved by his actions that he was not above the shedding of blood and the taking of a life in order to preserve and to present a people with hope from God. And uh, I don't doubt he probably would rather have been out front doing more of the same. But here he is. And he has come to this sanctuary, this refuge, this asylum. And in this place, at that moment, there is no doubt that all of the failures, the disappointments, the struggles, the errant thoughts, the things that have plagued his mind and plagued his spirit in days gone by are suddenly held in abeyance because he is standing in a sanctified, holy place. It's not a place where it has been sanctified in days gone by. It's not a sanctuary that has been recognized as a sanctuary in times past. But nonetheless, at that moment, it's a safe haven. It's a hiding place. It's a place of rekindling of a vision. It's a place of a renewing of responsibility. Is a place of a calling, an ordaining, and a sending forth. Praise God. I submit to you tonight that God has built into His plan for all of His people a place of refuge. And if you please, a safe place. I have no doubt that we have come to this meeting, most of us, troubled in our spirit, troubled in our mind, questions that we see no answers immediately to, but where to from here? What about our future? What about our present? But I'm going to suggest that here we are in this place, Nashville, Tennessee, and God has provided, and I say this with boldness tonight, God has provided for us that have gathered and taken the time, a place of refuge, a place that is safe. There'll be safe preaching here. There'll be safe worship here. There'll be safe music and singing here. There'll be safe activity for our young people. That's good apostolic church. There will be a place that is safe for our spirit. I am asking us tonight that we open up the door to our heart, to our spirit. I'm asking us as apostolic men and women, tear down some facades, pull down some biases, 
tear down some attitudes tonight. And for just a few days and just a few nights, let's turn this place into a place that is safe. A place where the anointing of God can come upon us. So that when we leave this place, we've got that vision again in our hearts from the Holy Ghost. Numbers 35 tells us of God's plan in the new land. That there would be six cities for refuge. It would be a place of relief from the pressure of pursuit. It would be a place free from the anger of the aggrieved. It would be a place free from the passion of the aggressor of blood or the avenger of blood. And it would be a place, and I feel the Holy Ghost in this tonight, it would become a place free from the oppressor. Praise God. I'm going to deal with that by the help of the Lord just a little bit more in a few moments. But freedom from the oppressor. And God built it in to his program. Put it into his work. And gave instruction to his people that they should set these aside. And when the people of God were obedient and saw the value of it, they not only did what God asked them to do, but they built more cities and more places where there was more freedom and more opportunity and more relief and more refuge and a place that they could run into and be safe. You know what I feel in the Holy Ghost tonight is that God is going to build some fires in this meeting that there's going to be places, not just an apostolic ministerial conference, not just in a camp meeting here and there, but I feel like that the Holy Ghost is going to come to individual pastors and wives and children who are under the pressure, who are feeling the hot breath of the avenger on their neck, and they're going to leave this place with a supernatural fire that burns in their spirit. And when they mount the pulpit in their place of worship where God has called them, there's going to be a fire that is built and churches are going to grow and revival is going to come and the apostolic church is going to have a visitation of the Holy Ghost. Praise God. Psalm 46 and 1, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in the time of trouble. Goes on to talk about the earth being removed, mountains removed into the sea, roaring waters that are troubled, mountains that tremble and shake, heathen that rage, and kingdoms that are moved. But the psalmist said that the Lord is our refuge. I submit to you that the writings of the Apostle Paul in Hebrews 4 and verse 9, he said there remaineth therefore a rest unto the people of God. Amen. There is a place of safety. I'm submitting to you tonight that in the Holy Ghost, in the presence of God, in a red hot fire that is supernatural in origin, that does not have the taint of flesh upon it, or the fingerprints of men to manipulate it, that there is a real move of God's Spirit available today. Uh, 
Hallelujah. Our world in general is not a safe place. Before we leave this convention, flights could be canceled because of terrorist activities. War could be breaking out as we're gathered in this house tonight. And death and dying could be around us. Violence fills our land. I suggest that the world in general is not a safe place. There comes a time when taking another vacation does not relieve the pressure or take care of the cry of a preacher's spirit or the yearning or the hurting of his wife and his children. There comes a time when the evangelist that shows up on the doorstep who's weary with the burden of revival and the onslaught of hell cannot find the relief in this world in another activity that diverts the mind for a season. I suggest to us that the world is not a safe place in general. Some of the traditional places that we have looked for safety, we find no safety. Our schools are not safe places for our children any longer. There's too many columbines. There's too many molesters. There's too many doctrines of devils that are being taught. And our schools are not the safe places for our children. A few days ago, in our city, one of the, uh, the headlines screamed of a horrifying event where a teacher, uh, a young man in his fifth grade classroom, would uh, go down to the school educational library and would uh, get films and bring them back into the classroom. And he would get long uh, films that took many minutes. And he would turn the lights out, darken the shades, turn on that educational film. And those innocent children, their eyes glued to the screen, were unaware of his activities as he molested children in his classroom. Our schools are not safe places. I submit to you tonight that our homes are not always safe places. Behind the silent and stark windows, behind the darkened and bolted doors, there is violence and unhappiness. And I'm even going to go so far and to be so bold as to declare that sometimes in the apostolic race, it's easier to avoid going home because it doesn't feel as safe as it one time did. Several years ago, we were at a picnic, church picnic. My wife left early and went to the home. And she came back trembling and frightened. While we were out, somebody had violated our home, kicked in the doors. And it was many weeks before we ever felt comfortable in our own home. I submit to you that hell is doing its best. And the demons of the hell are doing their best to take the safety out of our apostolic home. Peace that ought to be sometimes is not. Let me preach to you a little bit tonight. The joy that ought to be sometimes is not. The rest that sometimes ought to be, it most times, or pardon me, sometimes is not. But there is a touch that is available in the Holy Ghost. I feel it here in this conference tonight. There is a place for the anointing of God to build for us a place of safety. Get some 
things taken care of and get our hearts touched up by His Holy Spirit again. Our church houses are not always places of safety. I give you an example tonight for Samuel chapter 2, the sons of Eli and the immoral practices in the house of God. I give you as example tonight these sons of Samuel. For the Bible said they loved lucre and they took bribes and they perverted judgment. Amen. And hell in a lot of places has made the church house a battlefield that is sodden with the blood of preachers and the broken dreams of their families. I feel the presence of the Lord tonight. I'm not going to preach pop psychology. I'm not interested in a little touch me Jesus type of a service tonight. I'm not concerned about having a little chutty eye and a little shout around the aisles as preachers rejoice because we're together in fellowship. What I'm interested tonight and what I feel the confidence of the Holy Ghost uh, is that God wants to break in uh, on a troubled uh, apostolic church uh, and soothe some minds uh, and give some Holy Ghost direction uh, and breathe a fresh breath uh, of Holy Ghost reason uh, through our minds uh, and help us to lead here with the vision and the passion of His work burning uh, in our spirit. Hallelujah. Thou wilt show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. I submit to you it is always safe in his presence. Lift your hands and let's honor Him. Let's honor Him. Praise the Lord. Most of us have come to this meeting looking for a safe place. There's not a lot of safe places for us to carry our families to. Not a lot of safe places to carry our churches to. Not a lot of safe places to carry our own ministries to. But we have come to this meeting with the questions of, Is this a safe place? Praise God. I've already mentioned it. I'm going to touch it again. This is a safe place because doctrine is going to be preached in this place. We still believe in the oneness of God. It's not my message tonight, so I'm not going to chase after it. We still believe in the authenticity of the name of Jesus Christ. Come on. With His blood in His name, it's the only remitting name for sin. Don't take His name from us. Don't take His blood from us. Don't take what a baptism in Jesus' name from us. Don't trample on it. Don't mess with it. Leave it alone. We believe it. It's a safe place. Praise God. This is a safe place because there's no affinity for the Trinity in this place. Hallelujah. There's no affinity with the Trinity in this place. Not in this meeting. Not here in this house. Not while these men are preaching. Not while you're here in this place. Not while you've still got a voice. Not while God still reigns on His throne.
is a safe place for the reaffirmation of this apostolic truth. And there will be others coming, I believe, will preach it until we weep great tears of joy and the new revelation and dawning afresh, if you please, of that revelation is going to charge our souls uh, until we lead here a hundred strong uh, preaching again here, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Uh, preaching there is one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, uh, one God, one God, one God, Father of all, above all, and through all, and in you all. Hallelujah. There will be a reaffirming of the vision of apostolic revival with real church growth. I've wrestled with this. I've thought about it. I've danced around the edges of it in my mind. And I'm just going to touch it and move on. But I'm going to tell you, there is a real apostolic revival available there are hungry souls. Uh, if you'll preach to them the Acts 238 message, uh, they will repent of their sins. Uh, they will repent of their sins. Uh, they will submit to baptism in Jesus' name. Uh, they will receive the gift of the Holy Ghost uh, as the Spirit of God gives them the utterance. Uh, I'm not the only one. Uh, you're not the only one. Uh, he's got a people that are hungry for somebody to preach them the truth. Brother, if you had a revival and they didn't get this at 2.30 experience, you didn't have a real apostolic revival, but there'll be an affirmation again tonight that we can't have real church growth. Oh, clap your hands and shout unto it. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I reject the idea that only compromisers can grow a church. I reject the concept that only compromisers are praying people through the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I reject the idea that only the charismatics can pray them through by the dozens. I reject the idea that God is a respecter of persons. Rather, I say if they're charismatic, they didn't get this Holy Ghost. They didn't get this experience we're preaching about. Come on, somebody. There is real church growth available in the Holy Ghost. This is a safe place. Freedom from perverted and sensual worship. I said this is a safe place for the freedom from sensual, carnal, devilish worship. Amen. I still believe if you sow to the flesh, you shall of the flesh reap corruption. And it may say Jesus, but if it's carnal flesh, it's going to produce carnality. This is a safe place to worship God and to dance in the Spirit and to feel the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. 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 We've come to this meeting searching for a fellowship that embraces truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help us, God. We've come to this meeting. Some of us have come dazed and confused, uh, not confused in our doctrine and not confused uh, in our desire for God, uh, but some of us have come to this meeting because uh, of the attacks of the hell against our homes, uh, against our churches, uh, amen, and against our ministries uh, that we are reeling and rocking uh, and somewhere in the private chambers of prayer. I feel the Holy Ghost on me tonight. Uh, somewhere 
there in our private chambers of prayer, there's been men and their families that have lifted up secret voices to God and said, God, if you're still in this, I've got to have you touch me one more time. I've got to have an anointing of the Holy Ghost surge again. I've got to feel the old flame burning in my spirit. Oh, praise the Lord. 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 For some, it's never been like this. We've never seen a day like this. Never lived in a time like this. Never faced the pressures like this. Never known the battles like this. Never known the heartaches like this. Never had our homes violated like this. Never struggled in the churches like this. We look around and wonder where it comes from. What's going on around us? If I'd sown this, I'd understand that I was supposed to reap it. But I didn't sow this. And I'm reaping what I didn't sow. And questions abound. And questions come to the mind. I'll turn in. Not my Bible. Not I'll turn in not my preaching notes. Not I'll turn the pulpit to somebody else. Not I'll just find me a job somewhere. Not I won't preside not over the destruction of a church. Not but we've come to this meeting. Not I've got a word not from the Holy Ghost for you tonight. Not my brother, there's still a fire not that's been ignited. Not there's still a voice not that'll speak out of the flame. Lift your hands and let's seek Him. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And I'm going to submit to you tonight that the messenger that spoke to Moses was hid in the fire. Moses, on the backside of the wilderness, feeling far from his calling and far from his purpose, sees the bush, a divine visitation. There's a voice that speaks. And instruction that is given. Direction is found. And there's never a looking back. Never a looking back. For that moment. For that space in time. For that place in his life. It was a safe place. I don't know if I can describe to you how I see it in my mind and feel it in my spirit spirit about the way that Moses must have felt. Can you imagine the loneliness, the emptiness? Can you imagine the loss that's in his spirit? He's feeling so alone from what really burns in his heart when suddenly a voice from a phenomena of God's presence begins to speak. It must have been like cool water to a thirsty soul. It must have been like manna to a hungry spirit. It must have been 10,000 release rolled into a single solitary moment when he feels again that he loves me. He cares for me. He has me in mind. He is still interested in me. He's still got a ministry for me. He's still got a burden for me. He's still got a calling for me. Have you ever been there, brethren? Ladies, have you ever been there? Oh, it must have been like the moment of the breaking of the dawn. After 10,000 midnights, that fresh touch 
must get thrilled his soul. Hallelujah. 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 Verse 10 comes the commission. I want you to go to Pharaoh. And you by my hand are going to lead them out. I've heard their voice. I've heard their cry. I've heard their expectation. I've been listening to what you could never hear, Moses. I've been watching what you could never see, Moses. I've been observing what's been hidden from your eyes, Moses. And I have a commission for you and only you. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Verse 21 is the promise of fullness and not emptiness. You're not coming out empty. I won't send those people for it empty. But when they come out, they're coming out full. I'm not going to send you in and then leave you where you're at. I'm not going to, I'm not going to abandon this venture. When you tried it on your own, you got in trouble. But I'm going with you this time. And when you come out again, you're going to have something with you. You're not coming out empty. How many times have we gone into a time of seclusion and seeking after God when our souls felt so dry and empty? And when we came out in a few days, I'm telling you from my heart that there's been times that I've come out and I've had the same feeling of dryness and emptiness. Somebody said, well, you didn't pray. Don't charge me with that. You weren't there. You didn't hear. You don't know. But I can tell you that it wasn't for lack of desire. And it wasn't for lack of effort. And it wasn't for lack of hunger. It just simply was not the time. But God said you're not coming out empty. I've got a word tonight. God's not going to leave you empty. God's not going to leave you alone when you come back from His commission. When you fulfill His will, you're coming out full. You're coming out powerful. You're coming out with restoration. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Chapter 4, verses 3 through 7. He gives him irrefutable tokens. Amen. He gives him unshakable confidence. You're going to need it, Moses. You're going to need this. That rod that's in your hand, cast it down. And it became a serpent. Take it by the tail. And it became a rod. Remember that. You're going to need that. It's going to be dry for a season longer. could be tough for a season longer. But there will be some remembrance of some tokens. Amen. Amen. I've lost some tonight. Because you came with an agenda. And you came with a concept about what it ought to happen. Amen. But I'm going to tell you something. You didn't pray this one through. I did. You didn't seek God for this one. I did. It's not you on the hot seat tonight. It's me. Amen. And God. And this is what I feel in the Holy Ghost. There's some folks that need to get some tokens of confidence to take with them from this meeting. You better hear me. You're about to make shipwreck. I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel the Word of God on me tonight. You're going to make shipwreck if you try to plan your life out. You weren't yours when He called you. You were not yours when He anointed you. And you cannot be yours until He's finished with you. Hallelujah. But 
your hand in your bosom. Pull it out again. Oh God, it's that dreaded leprosy. Put it in it one more time. Pull it out and it's whole. You're going to take something with you. You're going to take something with you. I feel the Holy Ghost. You're going to take something with you. Amen. The devil's a liar. He's the father of liars. He's been lying to you. Take something with you. Verse 14. And I know this sounds too trite. But it's... I was praying. And this is what I feel like the Lord spoke to my heart. In verse 14, he gave him a network with his brother. He gave him a mouthpiece. He gave him a connection. He gave him a help. He gave him a balance. He gave him a voice. He gave him an anointed fellowship. He gave him a God-blessed, God-anointed help for his ministry. When Moses was like a God to the Egyptians, standing shoulder to shoulder was his brother Aaron and made like unto a prophet unto them. I want to preach to this conference tonight. There is not time for us to divide and isolate and to ignore the existence of your brethren. I'm suggesting tonight that there's a world of Pentecost that a lot of us did not even know existed. We were afraid and we were a little bit nervous. And we've been taught that those folks out there, they're not quite our stripe and quite our brand. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. Pardon me, brethren, I don't want to be arrogant. But I'm preaching to some men tonight and some apostolic ladies tonight. Forget the stripe. Forget the badge. And look at the ministry. And look at the message. And look at the anointing. It's time to find somebody. I need an errand in my life. I need a voice to help me out. I need a strength to lift up my hands. With the enemies coming in. I need somebody to lift up my hands. We ought to hear from God tonight. We ought to hear from God tonight. Give me an apostolic network. Give me a fellowship of men. Hallelujah. 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 Let's pray. I don't want us to miss God tonight. Let's pray. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Be seated just a moment longer. And musicians, get ready because I'm about finished. Though I feel the Holy Ghost working here. There's one more thing that I want to point out in this man's journey. And I know, I know that there's some raw wounds in this house. Some of them I am personally acquainted with. 
Some of them I know nothing about. But I'm sure that they are here. There are some raw, bleeding, hurting spirits that have staggered into this conference. In your mind, you've been questioning. I wonder what this meeting will provide for me. I'm going. It's curiosity that takes me there. I've heard so many stories. I wonder what these men are trying to pull. I'm sure they've got some hidden agenda. But I'm going to go, and I'm going to see what happens and transpires. But in your heart, there is open, bleeding wounds. One of the things that Moses had to deal with before he got to Egypt, the type of the world of sin, and dealt with Pharaoh and overcame him, a type of our evil adversary. But on the way, he had to deal with some family issues. He had to deal with some hurts. He had to deal with some pain. He had to deal with some emergencies. In his own family. His own family. So much so that it almost divided the closest thing to his soul. That was the relationship with his own blood and his own flesh. I feel tonight in God that there's enough hurt and wounds in dealing family issues in this house. That if we would drop the facade long enough to be honest before God, that there would come in this service tonight that touch of God that would begin a supernatural healing process. I'm not going to embarrass them. And they're here, and they may not appreciate what I'm about to say. And I'll try to be as delicate as possible. But there is in this house a real apostolic man and his wife that have only sowed good seed and good things in their church, in their home, and in their life. And unbeknownst to them, a teenage child climbing out of a second story window, slipping out into an, the night with an adult twice their age being seduced by a prison bum, being taken over by a seducing spirit. And all the empty, lonely nights of self-recrimination I know because of my length of time in the ministry and because of my advancing age and stature of gray hair, if you please, I get those phone calls in the night of young men who are struggling in their own home with questions and difficulties and problems that they don't even know how to deal with. And they have come to this meeting looking for a safe place. I feel the Holy Ghost. I am not posturing tonight. I'm not interested in the accolades. I'm not interested in the attaboys. I could care less about the congratulations. But I believe with all of my heart and I have felt it with tears. The white hot burden in my spirit tonight tells me that hidden beneath the voice or beneath the flame of a supernatural fire is a voice of Holy Ghost intervention. And there is a place that can be found in this place.
where the Spirit of God has chosen to come because the men of God with the families have gained together. That there is a place somewhere up here. I don't know how to describe it except to say that I believe in my heart that somewhere there is a flame that is burning high and the shadow of that flame has got the presence of God. And everywhere you step beneath the shadow of that burning supernatural fire is holy ground. And it's time to slip off our shoes. And it's time to get out of the hurry up mode. And it's time to cast aside some preconceived ideas and notions about what's going to transpire. And it's time to loose the arguments. And it's time to loose the frustration. And it's time to loose the accusation. And it's time to say, God! I will not embarrass her. But I don't love anybody on this earth more than I love my wife. And I'm just going to tell you that for me and my house, we sure do want to get into that safe place. And we sure do want some apostolic healing. And we sure do want the Holy Ghost to fall. And we sure do want to hear from Him. And I'm tired in my spirit of tucking some loads down with the light, down through the light. And I'm ready to lay some of those loads over in that safe place. Because glittering and beckoning and calling is a high calling of apostolic ministry. And at times when we're in this journey and we feel this load, we cannot fulfill that burden that God put in us because we're dragging along with us an impediment that we didn't ask for. We didn't want it. We'd like to get rid of it. Every man that we had confidence in, we've invited them to lay their hands on us. And yet nothing has loosed us yet. But I feel the Holy Ghost, and I'm not speaking just personally, but I'm speaking as the voice of God to this conference that there is a place in this meeting of safety. What did you come for? What were you looking for? What were you expecting? Did you pray and ask God to speak His Word to your heart? I've got one last scripture the musicians begin to play. For the Bible said in Exodus 12 and 51, And it came to pass the self same day that the Lord did bring the children of the Lord, uh, or did bring the children out of the land of Egypt. He loves me. This I know. He told me so. And when I heard it, I just wanted to fall. I didn't even want to get up. He loved me. He told me he did. He loved me. 
Do you know how many nights I wanted to hear that? I love you. You know how many prayer meetings I just wanted to feel that? I love you. I've got you in my mind. I've still got a calling on you. I've still got that vision out before you. I've got a safe place waiting on you. And if you'll get into that safe place, I'll commission you. I'll send you for it. And I'll be with you. You'll meet the devil. And you'll deliver my people. Because I really do love you. I don't know how you close this. I've never preached to this many preachers in my life and their families. But brethren, ladies, if there's a way that you can feel after God and you feel that touch of God's Spirit, I'm telling you, yea, I'm going to say it in the Holy Ghost somewhere tonight around this altar, you will enter that safe place. Would you like to? Would you like to? Lift your hands and call on Him, would you? I'm asking this conference that will, that want to.